The following is a presentation of GRS TV. We set the ball high. On top, could we so fly? Name in the bright lights. Looking like a star shot. We set the ball high. On top, could we so fly? Name in the bright lights. Looking like a star shot. I'll tell you what, Bill Withers sang it. I'll just paraphrase it. Ain't no sunshine when you're gone and no practice tomorrow. I'll tell you what, we're at the part of the year they call playoff time where you win or go home. And that's where we are this evening. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Homer Johnson Stadium. Welcome to our broadcast of playoff. <laughs> McKinney welcome here in Naaman Forest. There McKinney you go. McKinney in Naaman Forest. I had Plano last week. Anyhow, I'm Kevin Long, Bobby George riding shotgun. Bobby, there's all kinds of storylines we could utilize this evening, but I guess the number one storyline is the turnaround Naaman Forest made to get where they are. Yes, they were 0-5 to start the season, and it looked pretty bleak for them. They ended the season with a four and one run to get into the playoffs and just a magnificent ending to an exciting season for this Name and Forest football team. They are super excited. You can see the uh, people on the sidelines down there. They are just hyped up for this game. You know, this might be, it's been a long time since they've had a home game for their first playoff game. So this is an exciting night for them. They're going to be started out with Valdez as quarterback, Bennett as their running back, Dill as their high receiver. Exciting time. Here we go. All right. Um, Malachi Burrell is back deep to receive for the folks from Naaman Forest. McKinney getting ready to kick it off, and we'll get the starting lineup for you as soon as we get a kickoff right here as we're ready to go here as a 6-4 McKinney team taking on a 4-6 Name of Forest team, they're going to pooch it short. And uh, coming away with the ball for Name and Forest, uh, that was Devin Deal, and he's going to bring the ball up to, well, I'll tell you what, pretty good field position. They're going to get the ball about the 30, looks to be about the 34 yard line. Name of Forest this year, points per game, 20 points per game. They're only allowing 25 points a game. Yards, they don't give up a whole lot of yards either, 224 yards. 281 allowed. Now the big difference here is McKinney Lions, they give up about 357 yards a game. So their defense is a little bit slack. So we'll see what we can do uh, for Naaman Force. They can get this ball down the field and put some points on the board against this McKinney Lions team. Well, I'll tell you what, they had a illegal procedure right there, so that's going to back them up. But here's what the Rangers are looking at on offense. Up front, the linemen are going to include Will Cabinis, Demetrius Smith, Abdul Darkazari, uh, Azali, Dark Azali, Kendra Johnson and Cameron Smith. The quarterback's going to be Jaden Flores, and Jaden's got split backs in the backfield with him, including Kingsley Bennett, and his wideouts are going to include Devin Deal, Aiden Gonzalez, Huey Bryson, and Kieran Wright. Anyhow, they go ahead and they put Bennett in motion, and they're going to get him the football over there, and Kingsley's going to get a few yards almost back to the original line of scrimmage. So now they're looking at second down and probably about 11 to go. Nice little swing pass just to start the game out. He's in the, you know, he's he's only about 5'6", 145 pounds, but they have him in those wing back. They toss it out there to him. He's getting a lot of blockers in front of him. And if you get that one block right there, you can pick up some nice yards. All right, Jane from the shotgun once again. It appears they did not get it off in time. Now, in the backfield, they have Both Jahari Lee the joining Kingston Five yard, Bennett. Steals, second down. And we might add, Bennett this year has carried the ball 154 times for 878 yards and nine touchdowns, so we certainly anticipate they'll utilize him this evening. But in the it's backed up five, so we're looking at second down and about 17 right now is Flores from the shotgun. He is back to pass. Looking near side, throwing near side, overshoots his target over there. He was, looked like he was uh, trying to stick it in there to Kieran Wright. Kieran, by the way, has caught 11 passes for 100 in 12 yards this year. But anyhow, big third down, now third and long. Yeah, that's not how you want to start it out, setting, uh, getting, a, getting a delay game to start it out, back you up. 
And uh, now you're in a third and long. We'll see what they do. You know, they've got one-on-one -on -one coverage. They've got three guys out here in the backfield. Well, Flores is going to tuck it away and go. He's not oh. going to get very far either. Just beyond the line of scrimmage. So they're going to have to punt that one away. Yeah, interesting play call right there because he had three wideouts, and there was only one defender on three wideouts. He had his choice to throw to on that left side. He decided to pull it down and take off running. Didn't work out for him. Well, they're going to have to punt now. Isaiah Wallace back deep to receive for the folks from McKinney. And Francisco Scafetti is going to be kicking the ball away. Tell you what, gets a high kick, not very deep. But they're going to be able to get down underneath it, and that's going to go out of bounds. Boy, pretty good field position for these folks from McKinney. They're going to be putting the ball in play right around midfield. Yeah, it looks like they're going to start at the 49-yard line. Okay, actually the 46-yard line, but <laughs> you know what's a couple of yards. Now here's what the Rangers look like on defense. The guys up front are going to include Izzy Reina, Tommy Dunn, Doreen Negron, and Carter Baroud. And we'll get to the linebacking core in a second, but Samson Nazarko in the shotgun. He's going to give the ball out to O.J. Reed. O.J. with about five yards over there. Now the linebackers include Adrian Brown, Nick Albangoe, and out in the second there, they're going to go with Tristan Johnson, Tuamaga, Aiden Gonzalez, and Malachi Burrell. Okay, they get right up to the line of scrimmage. They're looking at a second down and about five. And then once again, they're going to give it O.J. And I'll tell you what, he's not getting anywhere there. A bunch of trousers seams in that hole. Yeah, very nice job right there by the defense. And that's a big group of guys right there headed, headed up by number 43 and number 85. Those are some big guys right there. That's Nick Abengawi. And, well, you see those guys just coming in there, just not giving them any room. Nice job right there by that defensive line. All right, Sampson back to pass. Oh, boy, the, here comes a here Come comes lava rush, and they're going to get to him. There you go. And I'll tell you what, they throw him for about a five-yard loss there. As they got a good rush on that one. And that's going to put McKinney in a position where they're they're looking at third and long. They're going to, fourth and long. They're going to have to punt this one away. Yeah, Tommy Dunn gets in there. Seeing just push it right up the middle, just collapses that pocket. Boy, and then a bunch of folks converged, and that. Pretty much ended that. Okay, Kingsley Bennett is back deep to receive. He's standing right about his 15-yard line, kind of a line drive kick, and he's not even going to attempt to, I guess you would say, return it. Why? They, they got the ball at the 32-yard line. Not bad field position at all. Yeah, and so, you know, they, had a, they, they, they started out offensively not too good, naming Forrest. Go ahead and punt it. Gives them good field position for the Lions. Lions were not able to do anything. Good defensive dry, uh, stance right there for... Our name and Forest Rangers, and and now they get the ball back to try try to start this thing over again. All right, we're going to have Jaden Flores in the shotgun, and he's just going to go ahead and give it off to Bennett. Not much there, of course, no negative yardage this time, but he only gets maybe a yard or two. Both teams kind of testing the waters, I think. You know, they they're just going to play their base offense and see what the defense is going to do for them you know they haven't played each other like in the season like you play a lot of your in-conference play play uh, so now you've got some teams that you don't really know how they're going to play so you're just going to fill them out a little bit well they fake the jet sweep bennett rolling to the far side and he's going to try to get it over the middle he, of course he's thrown across his body and that's always a tough throw to get kieran wright was there but a little bit low so they're looking at third and nine yeah there was just nothing it was a little bootleg action right there he takes off to the right it gets strung out because the defensive end plays a good job and he don't have anybody to throw to his receivers are just not around him all right we're looking at third and long as this game has been dominated by defense so far again Naaman's got three wide receivers, two wide receivers down to the end, to the left, and just nobody's over there to cover them. All right, they're trying to slip screen to the far side. Oh, that might be well. It worked for a little bit there as they were able to stick it in there to Devin Deal. 
Devin got probably about six, seven yards, but they're looking at fourth and one. Are they going to roll the dice here, Bobby? Well, it's towards midfield, but boy, you really need to go ahead and punt this thing away. It's too early in the game. Oh, they, oh, they might have got play. the offsides. This might be a play on the house. Throw it downfield. It's going to be uh -oh. intercepted, but I think this one's coming back. Any rate, anyhow, McKinney comes up with the interception and. They'll bring it down the far sideline, but hold the phone. Let's see what this flag's all about here. Yeah, that's why you go ahead and throw that one. It doesn't really matter. You know you got a free play. That offside against the defense. Yeah, there you got the free play. Five yards. The first, first down the of the evening for Naaman Forrest. So the gamble paid mm -hmm. off. But, yeah, you know, you ain't got nothing to lose. Why not hum a shot downfield and see what comes up? If he, your guy gets it, then you take the play. That's right. And if he intercepts it, it's like a punt. All right. Flores, now they're going to try the jet sweep they to bat him this time, and he's going to get about five, six yards out of that one. Pretty nifty little play there. Seven oh nine remains in this football game's first quarter here. Good block right there on the edge. It gives him a lot of room to get out there. But boy, that defense collapsed in a hurry. Those big linebackers got there quickly. Led by big number four, Daytron Brooks. All right, Flores from the shotgun. Looks like they're gonna go with the pistol right now. And just gonna go ahead and give it to Bennett and not much there as that defense converges. We might add, McKinney plays in a very, very tough league up there with folks like Prosper and Allen and, uh, well, those kind of folks. So they're accustomed some, to some pretty good competition. Now we might add, they had to defeat coming down the home stretch. They had to pick up wins over Jesuit and Boyd to go ahead and get into the playoffs. All right, they're going to give it a... Kingsley again, and just he's short there. of the first down, but uh, I imagine they'll just go ahead and roll the dice again here. That's going to leave him about a, a yard short. This is where you kind of need to line Boy, up. And they're going to punt. They're going to punt this yeah. one. Now, it's interesting that they went for it on their own 45, but now they're going to punt it on the other 45. Well, you know, unless we got a fake coming up here, which maybe we could. We could, but, you know, clearly they might be playing – it's just kind of interesting that they Might went for it on their, on their own side. Nope, they're doing exactly what I figured they were going to do. And I'll tell you what, that cigar wow. may explode in their face. Well, wow, oh, so still Edward pushing. The first down. That's interesting right there. I figured they would have just blown the whistle. But boy, right, he Jahari got Lee carried the football. <laughs> oh, and man. You know, he just went straight ahead, and he was stopped about a yard behind the line of scrimmage. But I'll tell you what, they just kept moving the pile, and they got on up there and were able to get the first down. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we're looking at a first down for, at the 42-yard line. They continue to they continue to roll. I mean, they had him right there, and he got pulled. And then you see the push by number 88 and 34. They come in there. The push, and, push. Yeah, they go ahead and make it work for them. Big, big Carter Baroud, he's 6'1", 210. He just pushed him in for the first down. All right, Flores. From the shotgun, they're just going to go ahead and give it to Kingsley. And, boy, he took a pretty good lick over there. They kind of lit him up. He doesn't get any yardage out of that one either. So we're looking at second down and about 10. Yeah, I think they're going to have to just spread it out just a little bit. They're going to have to throw it out there to wide receivers, make those linebackers get out of that box because they are just crowding it. You can see them. They're just coming in. They all know that there's going to be a, a running play, and, the, and they're not respecting the pass. So you've got to go ahead and spread this thing out. All right, Jaden Flores rolling to the far got side it. now. He hums a shot down the uh, far sideline, and that one is going to be incomplete. So... They'll be looking at third and long again. He was wide open. He get it about a seven, eight yard out, and he was there. Just got to go ahead and throw that ball a little bit earlier, a little bit quicker. And see if he can come up with something. All right, 428 remains. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. We have no score here, as this game has largely been dominated by defense. But Naaman Forrest on the move here. They've gotten themselves two first downs. We'll see if they can complete. I guess you'd say complete this one. All right, Flores back to pass. Set up the screen to the near side. No one's home, though, so 
Fourth and ten. I would imagine you punted here. Defending for the Lions, okay? Moses. Brings up fourth and ten for the Rangers. You know, we might add that we we're talking about the incredible turnaround. You know, this team started out losing to Boyd 45-7. Then Arlington to Lamar 38-0. Then they lost to Eaton 31-0. You know, at this time, Jesse Perales had to felt like a guy who was just figuring out how deep the swamp was and had no idea how to get out of it. But he figured it out. They were able to come back and start beating some pretty good football teams. As the ball goes out of bounds about the 30-yard line, that's what they take it from. But pretty remarkable turnaround for them. Uh, oh, man, absolutely. Now, but those teams are some pretty tough teams that they had to go through. And uh, But, boy, when they got back into conference play, they went 4-1. and one over that stretch and and it's that's the way to end it you want to get into the playoffs you got it at the very end of your season your last five games you got to come up with some really nice winning streaks and they did just that well and you know they've improved each week and it's one of those deals i don't know that there'd be anybody in the whole metroplex who would actually look forward to playing name and forest right now even though they're four and six you know it's kind of a well what did <laughs> admiral akbar say it's a trap yeah, and, and they're a young team, too. I mean, you look down their class roster, and it's a bunch of sophomores and juniors, just a few seniors on the team. So they've really got something going, even for next year. You know, they're going to have a real good class come through here next year. Okay, Samson and the Zarko from the shotgun. He's going to just hand Woo! the ball off to O.J. Oh. Reed. They light him up pretty quick. Guess who that was? Davine Deal. Oh, I mean, to tell you, he came along. He was looking for body donors right there. Man. He just came in there and cleared the house. You know, here's what McKinney's going to go with on offense. The guys up front include uh, Juan Ver Veradines, Devin Vasquez, Will Thompson, Cameron Green, and Josh Gordon. The quarterback is Nazarko as they put a man in motion there. That's Reed. Nazarko throwing over the middle, and he's got the pass complete to the near hash. And gathering the ball in there is Isaiah Wallace. Now, Isaiah has caught 77 passes for 755 yards this year and two touchdowns. So they go to him quite often, and he delivers a first down right there. Well, that was a nice strike right there to him. Now, all right, Nazarko is going to, well, fake it to the – fake it to the – Running Ooh. back, the boy. He don't have a. He's got a lot of company in that backfield. Quick, and they're going to throw him for a loss. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit right there, Kendall Ivory. Or I mean, Darren Negron gets the t the tackle. But again, Devine Deal comes right there, and he he does figure out who's got the ball, and he was able to come off the running back and get to the quarterback, and then boy. He gets finished off right there. Okay, and Zarko is going to run out of the pocket now. Now he's looking around, throws a pass downfield. And that one's picked on the far sideline. I'll tell you what, the Forest comes up with the first break of the evening here as coming away with that football for Naaman Forrest Tristan was Johnson. Tristan Johnson. Yeah. He comes up with the INT, and they're in business with pretty good field position. Yeah, that was very nice play. I mean, from the defensive ends coming out there and rushing the quarterback, see him get to him. He has to get outside. Then he thinks he's got his guy running deep. But Johnson turns and runs with him. And Johnson's tall guy. He's 6'2", 170 pounds, and he wasn't going for that. He, he went up and got that thing. That's a nice defensive play right there. All right, Jaden Flores from the shotgun. has got trips to the near side. Just going to give it to Kingsley so he can sweep the corner. 45-50. Now a flag comes out right where you would expect to hold. So hold the phone. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, they got him, the wide receiver getting out there and holding him just a little bit too long. You got to let him go. Well, they're marching that one back. And so that's going to bring up the first down in about 20 is. Naaman gets thrown back a bit here. They get a Start from the spot bit of, the of a setback. Still. We got 2.44 remaining in the first quarter. We have no score at 0-0. As two teams going at each other. And, of course, we were saying temperature about 48 degrees. And I, I, I'll tell you what, not a bad crowd at all. I would call this probably a mid-November typical crowd where you don't have overflowing, I guess you would say, uh, capacity kind of crowd. But you do have some folks up there watching this game and interested in seeing the high school state playoffs. Absolutely, and, and there's no wind at all. I mean, the flags are set still. You see it, it's about 45 degrees, but 
it feels so nice out there when you're running around and playing football. It's perfect football weather. Well, I'll tell you what, the players like playing in it. That's right. Okay, Jaden Flores with split backs in the backfield. He is back to pass. Look at down the near sideline. He's got a man open okay, over there. No now, flag. they're looking for a flag over there. I don't know if they're going to get one, but they were kind of pretty certain that Bryson Huey had some folks hanging on him. I think he has a legit ask well, we'll on check that it out one. The yeah. playoff right there, or the playback right there. We put the ball they out put there. Put up nice. in the air, and let's see. Well, I think that could go either way. But anyhow, no call, and so it's going to be second down and ten. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line. Flores, oh boy, he fumbles the football back to pass. Going to have to get rid of it quick. They get a kind of a hot route safety valve over there on the far sideline. That. It was a Devin deal, and that's not going to get him. In fact, that's going to lose him a few yards. So we're looking at third and about 22. And you can see the snap right there, and just it's basically a panic move to get it out to him. But boy, they could really take advantage out here to the to the bottom of your screen. They've got three receivers. Usually, they get that three receiver set, and there's really only one or two guys covering over there. If they could figure a play to get somebody the ball. They real ha really have a good opportunity. All right, Jaden Flores is back to pass. Look at this. Look on the other side. We got a, well, I'll tell you what, we got a flag down there. He's going to tuck it away and go. He's not going to get much yardage out of it. Now, if that's against Naaman Forrest, it's going to be fourth and about 21. So I suspect they'll just decline the penalty. The folks from McKinney will just decline the penalty. Well, you know, the way that uh, Name and Force has been punting the ball, they've only been netting about 8 to 10 yards per punt. So I'm not sure that they won't go ahead and push them back and force them to punt, punt from, to further punt from back, right, yeah. yeah, further back and uh, see what they can do from that. Well, we'll see where they spot the ball. 135 remains in this first quarter. You know, when, yeah, you, when, when you see that your defense – on the offense. You see that your defense has really not allowed is David Forrest to Fourth do down. anything. Uh, you pretty you can trust them pretty good. You you kind of think, hey, they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to get a, a first down here. But you're right, they're just gonna decline that one. Probably the smartest move. They'd make them punt. Well, just get the ball out of there and yeah. let Francisco Scafetti come on in there and see if he can punt them out of trouble here. Of course, Wallace back deep to receive. Isaiah Wallace does it all for him, McKinney, and he is back deep to receive. Boy, that's a oh, good kick. That's go. over his head. And he fumbles the football, and they're on top of him. Of course, he sprints out of there, and this is when you overkick your coverage, and it explodes in your face. Wallace coming to the near side. He's to the 40. They cut off his angle. He's out about the 43, but he fumbled the football, and all of a sudden, I think that – you know, it looks bad for the offense at first, but that could throw off the timing of the team coming down to tackle him. And he was able to slip out of there and probably get about 15, 20 yards out of it. Well, he actually got more than that. He's at 25. 18, yeah. They got about 18. You're right. It, it, and they get excited. Everybody gets out of their lanes trying to get there. And then he actually makes a good run, actually. He's kind of strong, cuts inside a couple of guys, but they had the pursuit on him and was able to drag him down. But, boy, that was a booming kick. Now right, we've got the pistol formation with Reed right behind the Zarko, and they're just going to go ahead and give it to OJ. OJ ain't going anywhere, and the reason he's not going anywhere, I'll tell you what. Tommy Dunn wasn't taking prisoners. He gathered his man in there and threw him to the ground. One yard gain out of that, so we're going to have second down and about nine to go. Okay, 6'3", 265 pounds. A junior, he sheds his block pretty quick and just takes him down. Look at that. That's a nice job. Defense has really excelled in this game. Okay, we got 45 seconds remaining. Nazarko back to pass. Got time thrown over the middle. Got a man open over the middle, and they're going to hum it in there to Isaiah Rojas. Isaiah has caught 46 balls for 854 yards and nine touchdowns this year, and he gathers one in there. That's a big first down for McKinney as they're able to move the ball up there close to – well, close to the 30, 25-yard line. Looking far side, trying that slip screen. That doesn't work. So clock will stop with 26 seconds remaining. 25 seconds, still 0-0. Zero, zero, and we're looking at a first and or second and 10 from the 25. I tell you, he's got a pretty good arm. I mean, he's able to sling it in there. Both his passes have been pretty good. Now, that one right there, 
Burrell Malashi could almost pick that one off. All right, Sampson from the shotgun gives it a read straight ahead, and Reed's going nowhere as they, I guess you would say, close down the fort real quick there, and he'll get maybe a yard, and that'll probably do it for the first period here, and it is going to end, it appears, 0-0 as defense pretty much dominates the game. Well, I'll tell you what, we've ended one quarter. It's 0-0. You're listening to GRS TV. Back at you after these messages. Well, welcome back to Homer Johnson Stadium, everyone, and welcome back to our broadcast of the folks from McKinney taking on Naaman Forest. We've completed one quarter of play. It is 0-0. So, uh, Bobby, I guess you would say defense dominated the way the first quarter. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to Tommy Dunn, big number 85, and, and uh, De 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 Devin Deal, number 11. And uh, those guys really did a good job, and it's they've really held – uh, McKinney to very little yards. I mean, they've had a couple of two, a couple, two passes that they've completed for first downs, and outside of that, there's been nothing for them. Certainly not in the running game, but anyhow, Sampson from the shotgun back to pass. Thrown to near side, got a man open over there, and that one's broken up down there. As coming on in there was Creighton Thompson. He got a hand on it, and uh, Tua Maga was also there, so he threw it kind of into bumper-to-bumper traffic there, and a bunch of Rangers were there ready to make a play. Well, they had an opportunity right there to make a big play, an interception down in your own territory. Now, they've held, they've held McKinney that whole first quarter for 38 yards, just two interceptions, 38 yards, and 45-yard uh, passing, but then they lost a couple of yards on the minus seven on the rushing. All right, Seth Cox is going to come on in, see if he can get a field goal, and he's not going to do it. So I'll tell you what, this remains 0-0. Zero, zero. We may have one heck of a taffy pull before the night's over. <laughs> taffy pull. Yeah. Because it, 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 it stays 0-0. Zero, zero. Now, Naaman's going to take over the ball about the 24-yard line, and they'll see if they can get anything cranked up. They've I guess you would say have their moments too, but haven't been able to get well, what's hit pay dirt. Yeah, what's killing them is they've had three penalties for 20 yards, and really they've had a, another penalty that got declined for another chop block. So, you know, oh the penalty's hurting them. Jaden's going to have to do some freelancing here and just throw the ball away because a snap went over his head. He immediately was able to get control of the ball, but by that time, I guess you would say the timing was way off. Probably your best bet, throw it out of bounds there, make sure no damage gets done. See right there, it just went way over his head, but it took a good bounce for him. It did, because they can take a lot worse. Yeah. All right, 11.45 remains in the second quarter. It's 0-0 still, as Naaman Flores trying to get cranked up here a little bit. Flores going to give the ball to Bennett. Oh, boy, he's got a little bit of running room over here. He's going to get up right about the 34-yard line. He is close to that first down. He may even have it. Boy, every time they take off running around there, you start looking for flags that could be thrown, and, and uh, none this time. They were able to get outside, get some good seal blocks, but you see that right there towards the end. He thought you were going to get a foul right there for holding. No penalty comes in. You get your first down. All right, first of 10 from the 35 now. They're in the pistol formation. They're going to give it a read. No, they're not going to give it a read. They're going to give that off to Jahari Lee. And, boy, does he ever run into a, I guess you would say, stone wall there or what. But they're able to corral him pretty quick and throw him back. So they're not getting anything out of that. They may have even lost a yard or two. Yeah, they got to listen to that whistle, and that whistle needs to come a little earlier because you can't just keep pushing people back 10, 12 yards and drive them into the ground after the whistle. That's, that's a no good right there. All right, now we're going to go from the 
Pistol once again, and this time they're going to look near side, throw near side. There's Devin. He's in the open space. And, you know, he has some athleticism, and he was able to turn it on there, and he got about six yards out of there. But if he was just a maybe a foot or more so in the open, he could have turned that into something else. There you see him right there, and he's able to. Well, he had plenty of company right away, but he gets a six-yard gain out of it, so yeah. they're looking at a third and manageable five right now. Yeah, they need to keep throwing that out there to him because it's it's there. They don't have any defenders over there on that offense. Honey, they heard you. They hurt you. Oh. They go back to that slant route, but they can't stick it in there, so they're looking at third and about five right now, so we'll see if they kick it or could they come up with some more chicanery like they did before when they faked the kick and went for it. And I'll tell you what, they got just the guy in there, too. They got Jahari Lee in there, so they could short snap it to him. But I'll tell you what, I think McKinney is anticipating that yes. they're going to punt it away as they've got Wallace back deep to receive. Absolutely. 10-28 remains. That's another good kick. It's going to drive Wallace back. Well, it's going to hit and bounce out of bounds about the 18-yard line. Outstanding special teams play there. That's exactly what you want to do. He does a little rugby-style punt, kind of rolls to his right, punts it. Boy, it takes that good bounce and goes out of bounds. No chance of, of a return. Man, that's just what you want right there. Flip the field. All right, it's going to be first and 10 from the 20-yard line. That's where it went out, the 20-yard line. I thought it was more like the 18, but what's two yards? 20-yard line. 10, 21 remains in the first half, and we still have no score. Nazarko from the shotgun. He's got Reed back there with him, throws to the far side, and it is complete. So he's able to stick it in there to Wallace. Oh, my goodness. He nearly, he nearly, I guess you would say, spun away there and got out of control, and... He had a lot of running room in front of him, and actually that was Isaiah Rojas, who got about nine yards out of that one. So Yeah, they had him dead to right, and they just he was able to get a little stiff arm, pick up some yards there. All right, they're going to go ahead and give it a read. He's going to get their first down. He gets about four yards out of that. So that is their fourth first down of the evening, and that will move the chains with 10.07 remaining in the first half. So low about coming down. All right, Sampson has twins to the near side, a single setback in the backfield with him. He's going to fake it to him. Back to pass, throwing far side. I'll tell you what, they're lucky that one wasn't picked again. It was incomplete, but there were two Rangers right in the area. Yeah, Kendall Ivory plays that perfectly. He drops back. And forces Sampson to throw into double coverage right there. Well, they're looking at second and ten right now. Clock stop with 9.52 remaining, I guess. Maybe perhaps we ought to tip our hat to both defenses. We got a penalty on this one. Automatic. First time. Oh, boy. Uh, didn't catch what he said right there, but well, that's, a, that's a big play here. Well, gives them a first down. Gives them their fifth first down of the evening. And that's where Sampson will go into action here. He's just going to give it a read. Oh, my goodness, that is going nowhere. As they were, they were, I'll tell you what, it looked down there like Durham Negron was waiting on that ball carrier like a mugger at an ATM. Boy, I tell and he you. threw him for a loss. <laughs> yeah, he was right on it. He just comes straight through, dominates his offensive lineman that was blocking him, and just smokes. The running back. All right, Sampson is running for his life now. They're going to get to him back there. Woo! Now they're, that, that's a 10-yard loss. They have thrown them for about a 10-yard loss. They're looking at third and about 20. The forest is coming alive on defense here. Yeah, now that right there was a blitz up the middle, and they had to come in really quick and catch that blitz. And then when that happens, Izzy Reyna, watch him come around the end. Oh, yeah. Is he in business to do business right there as he threw him for the huge loss? They're looking at third down and about 23 to go. Clock rolling with 8.50 remaining in the first half. We still have no score out here at Homer B. Johnson Stadium. Nazarko back to pass. They set the screen up, but that's not going anywhere as the forest is waiting on him. That's a loss of about four more yards. So I'll tell you what. <laughs> 
Naaman Forrest really looking outstanding on defense that series. Boy, Adrian Brown comes flying through there. I mean, they read that perfectly. I thought they had a good setup right there for the screen, but watch them just come in there and just destroy it. All right, Kingsley Bennett going back deep to receive. Now he's right back about the 25-yard line, so we'll see if he can get any kind of a return out of this one. But closing in on the eight-minute mark, still no score. Oh, boy, that's up the shaft, and I'll tell you what, that is not going to get him much. Oh, they do oh, get a get good a bounce. bounce. They do get a good bounce. Okay, and so the ball will die a natural death at the 39-yard line, but good position from Naaman Forrest. Boy, that was a great defensive stance right there. Now the punt turned out to be okay for the Lions, but but what a great stance right there by the defense. I mean, they had a couple of sacks, and now that actually that drops them on defense. That pushed them back to McKinney's. They've only had 35 total yards McKinney has now Boy, coming in that, through here. That defense is really playing well. All right, Flores fakes the inside handoff, throws it over the middle. Got a man over the middle. That's Aiden Gonzalez. Aiden's caught 15 balls for 251 yards and three touchdowns this year. And he comes up with a nine-yard gain right there. So they're looking at third, uh, second and one. Yeah, nice little play action. That pulls the linebackers up because they think that the, that the running back's going to get the ball. And he just pulls it down and throws it out there to Gonzalez. Just a nice executed play. All right, Flores. This is going to hand it off to Kingsley, and boy, they're going to throw him for a loss on that one. So that's they're not going to get their first down. They're going to be looking at third, and probably boy, I thought I was hoping it was more like two, but it's five. Yeah, that Brooks. looking at third and five. He's throwing for a four-yard loss there. Yeah, you got to go ahead and just take that straight up. You can't go for these losses. And Brooks was right there to make the side and tackle. And uh, but boy, when you're you're in that situation, you got to run it right up the middle. You got to run it out hard because McKinney's pretty strong outside, and they have not been able to get outside on them yet. All right, we've got trips to the near side. We'll see if they work to the near side. They're going to throw it over the middle, but can't complete the slant route. So that'll bring up fourth down, and they're in a position where they're going to have to punt it away. So McKinney will get their hands on the ball. However. In the field position battle, Naaman is holding their own there as they ought to be able to, I guess you'd say, pin them back relatively long where they've got a full field to work with. Naaman averages about 20 points per game. So you expect that they were able to be able to get a couple of points on the board here. All right, the ball hits right about the 30 and bounces out of bounds there. So we'll see where they actually mark the ball. They're going to mark it right at the 30-yard line. That's where McKinney will put it in play. And as we've said, Naaman, last time, I'm telling you what, they were coming at him with, like, sharks released from a holding <laughs> tank. They just flat out got after him. And we'll see what they do this time. 6.38 remains. We still have no score. So, Bobby, really, we really got to tip our hats to this defense yeah, on both ab teams. Absolutely. Na Damon's only allowed them a negative 15 yards rushing. How about that? Nazarko back to pass. Got plenty of time, and he's looking over the middle. And I'll tell you what, Isaiah Rojas caught the ball, but Isaiah also paid for it, too. As they lit him up about the 41-yard line. But he does get his first down. Yeah, Burrell. That, that is her seventh first down of the half. Burrell hits him at the exact same time you see right there. So a good play on defense, but a bit really well-executed pass and catch. Okay, Nasarko, plenty of time. He puts it down the far sideline. He's got a man open over there. And uh, they're able to come up with a football there as Isaiah Wallace. I'll tell you what, he, they had good coverage on him, but he still was able to come up with a football. So Nazarko with a nice, nice, well, that's a good pitch and toss right there. But Nazarko put it right in there. Okay, so they're looking at first and 10 from about the 30. They're on a roll here. Put a man in motion, throw the slant over the middle. There's Wallace. And Wallace is going to get about five yards out of that. Now penalty comes in right away. Let's see what this is all about. And, you know, I think we might have had a chop block on that, but we'll see. They're marching McKinney back. And if you're naming... Man, that's a good thing. 
First and foul. Yeah, that's right. Gets the offense. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Still, first down. Boy, that kills them too, because now they're looking at first down about 23. They would have been second down in about five. So, pretty good break right there for the Forest. Yeah, Sampson's got a pretty good arm, man. He's putting the ball right on the money, putting it right where his receivers can catch it. And that's going to spread that defense out and and uh, open that running game up a little bit. All right, he hands the ball up to O.J. Reed, and O.J. ain't getting too much out of that one. Well, I tell you, that name and force defense came to play. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, i got to take that back. That's R.J. Carver who's handed the ball off. R.J. has carried the ball 118 yards for 623 yards, so they've got a new running back in the game. But they're looking at second down and about 20 to go. Samson back to pass. Plenty of time. Now he hums a shot down the far sideline. It's playable, boy. I'll tell you what, I think Naaman can. He can play. That was a boy, great for a play second there, right there. For a second there, I thought. For a second there, I was holding my heart because I thought McKinney might have come away with the football, but they didn't. Yeah, Burrell Third was down. right on him. And I tell you, Samson's got a great arm. He's putting that ball where his receivers can get it. But look at that tight coverage right there, Burrell. Oh, he, he, I'll tell you what, that was that was a pretty good throw there. Yeah, Burrell's right on him, puts his hand up and knocks the ball out right at the last second. But All right, they're looking at third and about 20 to go, and the Zarco back to pass. Oh, they're getting to him this time. He's going to have to run for his life. Throws a pass over the middle, and once again, some outstanding coverage in the defensive secondary. As getting a hand in that passing lane was Kendall Ivory. It is fourth and 20. I imagine you have to punt it away here. Yeah, what's happening is that off that defensive line is really dominating McKinney's offensive line. When you do that, you can drop some guys into coverage. You see, take Samson's taking a big hit right there. You drop all these linebackers in coverage, and it makes it real difficult for him to find somebody to throw to. Not a whole place, a lot of place to go. But Kingsley Bennett is deep to receive. Now, I guess you would say. McKinney's won the field position battle here, though, because ball is going to hit. Oh, it's going to bounce in the end zone. Okay, so let's get it at the 25. Not bad field position at all. We got four. 53 remaining in the first half. 0-0 zero, zero is our score. And, you know, we've said this before, but it bears repeating. Both these defenses have, have just been outstanding this evening, which is why we got a 0-0 zero, zero score. Yeah, we've... You know, they've got to figure out how to throw the ball and get to the ball, ball to some of their playmakers outside. They've only had 26 passing yards, 22 rushing yards. They're going to have to spread it out. All right, Flores is going to tuck it away and go, and he's in trouble and gets himself out of trouble. But, uh, you know, he, for the most part, stays in trouble. He, he's going to lose about five on that one. It's not, not a whole lot of places to go. And again, he's got three wide receivers out here. Nobody's even cover him because they don't respect that he's going to throw it to them. They're just wide open. Boy, if they can take advantage of that. All right, we got twins to the far side. Split backs in the backfield for Flores. Now they put a man in motion. They're going to get it to him. That's Kingsley. But once again, that McKinney defense really is converging well. And they were over there ready to handle that one. That's going to be a loss of a couple of yards, too. So now we're looking at third to about 17. Yeah, easy play because they do a swing pass to Bennett. They pull him from the backfield out to the to that direction. And when they're doing that, the linebackers are following them out there. And it just closed in too, too quick on them. All right, clock rolling with 350 remaining in the first half. Once again, 0-0 is our score. Jaden Flores from the shotgun. He's rolling to the near side. Boy, oh, they no. got a good rush on him. And, boy, I had 52-card uh -oh. pickup written all over that. Intercepting that one is Dayton Brooks, and Dayton's going to bring it to the house. Oh, boy. They had a, a free man run right up the middle on him. And that's Daytron, rather. Daytron Brooks. See, they and, come in there quick on him right there, and it makes him have to throw quickly. He had his guy open, just overthrows him because he's trying to get away from that defender. Boy and Brooks, I'm telling you what, he he saw he had green and glory in front of him and he wasn't he wasn't messing around. He takes it to the end zone. And the extra point by Seth Cook. Forthcoming. Okay, Seth's got it. Seven nothing is our score. 
We're back at you after these messages. You are watching GRS TV. Well, welcome back to Homer Johnson Stadium, everyone, and welcome back to our broadcast of Naaman Forest taking on McKinney. I'm Kevin Long, Bobby George in riding shotgun, and we've had, I guess you would say, one big play tonight, and it has the folks from McKinney up 7 nothing, Bobby, with that interception there. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. When your offense has been struggling, both team defense has been playing really well, 0-0, zero, zero, and then all of a sudden that offense gives one up on you. So that's, that's a tough one for Name and Force right and, there. And it was just an overthrow, too. It wasn't really anything all that blatant, but it sure a mistake like that sure can hurt you. But anyhow, Name and back deep to receive. 333 remaining on the clock for the first half. 7 nothing as I score. A little pooch kick to the far side. And they're going to let it drop, and Kingsley's going to have to go retrieve it. And that ball is going to end up out of bounds about the 13-yard line. I'll tell you what, McKinney with a good break there as we might have had a little bit of confusion on the receiving team for Naaman for us as to who was going to take it and when they were going to take it and where they were going to take it, and the ball bounced. And all of a sudden it's bouncing out of bounds. So, Yeah, and all you have to do really right there if you're Naaman Forrest is – get a foot or something out of bounds when you touch that ball and then it becomes an out of bounds kick and it goes out to the you have to re-kick well, it. Well, the 30 you know, yard line or, or they have to re-kick it. Or have to re-kick right. it, yeah. But it, I don't know if he did that or if he just You know, I think he, he maybe he, he did knocked. because it looks like the refs are having a conference right now and I can't think of anything other than maybe either that or where he kinda, which I, Starbucks they're going to go to after the game <laughs> or what. But let's, well, we can see right here, see if anybody touched it. Yeah, he may have knocked it out of bounds. Nope, he didn't touch let's it. Let's see right here. Yep. I don't think he touched it. If he touched it, he just barely touched it. We ought to let the referee <laughs> come on up here and make take a look at that. Now if they're going to rule that he did touch it, and so it's going to be first and 10 from the 15-yard line. Okay, name him down. Actually, the 13-yard line. Naaman is down 7 nothing. They're going to have to come over here and talk to the coach and find out what they're going to do here. Coach Perales wants an explanation. Boy, and Coach Perales is a legend at Devaya High School in El Paso. And it really is kind of interesting. He wanted to pop at coaching in the Metroplex. He got it. And I really think you got to say... In one year, he's made his mark because when they were 0-5, if you'd told me right then and there this is going to be a playoff team, I don't know that I'd have been able to get my wallet out quick enough to bet on that one. And they turned it around amazingly, really picked up some impressive wins, and here they are in the playoffs having won for their last five. All right, they're just going to give it to Kingsley. And once again, that defense – is really strong up front because here there's nowhere to run. Yeah, I think it's that linebacking core right there is able to come through there and and come up to the line and really shut down that offensive running attack because they're just able to shed tackles. There's no offensive lineman getting out to that second level and blocking those linebackers. All right, now we're in the pistol formation. We're going to look to the near side. They're going to get it to Devin over there. But, boy, these folks from McKinney, they're pretty good at that defensive side of the football, and they're able to get every entrance and exit covered quickly, and that's actually going to be a loss of yards. Well, no, they're going to gain about one out of that. So we're looking at third and about 11. Looks like we got Austin Valdez, the junior, in there at quarterback now. Okay. They are going to switch QBs real quick here, and... Austin has completed 55 of 124 yard, uh, passes 
And he has back to pass, throws it over the middle, and no one's home there, so they're going to have to punt it away. Fourth, fourth and 11, and they'll have to punt it away now. 222 remains in this first half. As we've said, 7 nothing, McKinney, and the seven points is by virtue of kind of a faux pas by these folks from Naaman Forrest throwing an interception deep in their own territory, which you certainly hate to see. But 7 nothing is our score, and they'll see if they can keep McKinney off the scoreboard for the rest of this half. Yeah, now they're uh, punting out of their end zone here. What you don't want is a big return. All right, Francisco gets some good wood on the ball there, and he kicks it out to the 48-yard line. That was an outstanding kick. When you consider he started right at his own goal line, that's 52 yards in the air. Yeah, that's nice. And anyhow, that's where the folks from McKinney will put it in play. Now, 2-16 remains in this football game. I'd say we got a good one out here. That's a pretty good game. Yeah, now defensively, they've held Samson Azarco to uh, ten, 6 of 10 passing, 60%, 90 yards now, one interception. They've really held the, the uh, running attack, though. They just haven't been able to run against this, uh, this defensive fr uh, front four and these linebackers just really held them. Negative 11 yards they've held the Lions to on running. All right, Sampson Nazarko is going to give it a read straight ahead. He's got a little bit of uh -oh. room this time. He's to the 40, to the 35, and they finally drag him down about the 30. That's a 22-yard pickup right there by O.J. Reed, who scored four touchdowns this year. And uh, I guess he was a step or two from scoring a fifth oh, right oh, there. Oh, yeah, oh, no, but it's coming back. Yeah, we got a flag. That's a good thing. Bottom. It's all for nothing. In baseball, they call that it's a long strike. <laughs> well, that's why the, the the hole opened up so good for him, I guess. Well, was, that could be too. You know, you, know, the, you know, sometimes you see something like that where the blocking looks superb, and it happens so fast you don't realize it. But the referee who's right on top of it realizes he didn't he didn't block him. He tackled Holding. him. Yeah. On the offense. And so that's going to be a 10-yard penalty. First down. And that's going to bring up a second down, about 22 to go here. Well, they're going to say to go 20. But anyhow, a good break for the Forest. McKinney back to pass. Sampson looking far side. Now he's throwing to the far hash. Sticks it on in there to Rojas. Rojas gets about 10 out of that. But nowhere's near the first down. They're looking at second down and about 10. Now, 150 on that clock. I imagine they're going to be in some sort of prevent defense, just keeping everything in front of them and get that minute 40 off the clock. Okay, Sampson from the shotgun. Reed's in the backfield with him. Now he goes in motion. They look like they're going to swing it to Reed. They do. Oh, a missed tackle. Out. Nope, not a missed tackle. How about that? Boy, Adrian Brown comes out there. It looked like it was open for a second, but boy, he closed Adrian on it Brown in a hurry. Adrian Brown in. He's a six foot, two hundred ten pound senior, and that was a big time tackle right there. Because had he not hung on right there, he had some running we, room. We were looking at some running room. All right, Nazarko with a third and about sixteen, and he ain't Ooh. going anywhere. Because that pass rush is a lava flow, and they get to him. And they're looking at, well, they're looking at real problems now. Fourth and about 20, oh, I'm going to say about 23. So they're going to punt it away. Boy, Negrom and Dunn, boy, they have really dominated that defensive end area. See, Negrom coming through. Oh, boy, that's a big hit right there by Negron. He's coming in from that mm -hmm. defensive tackle spot. He's just dominating on this game. Come on. Towards the name of Farrell. That's the right. first time out. Well, They're going to take a time out here and try to talk things open with 57 seconds now. I'm sure, you know, if you're McKinney now with shoes on the other foot, you're getting into prevent defense and just see if you can get that 57 seconds off the clock. But, boy, we've had an incredibly outstanding defensive game here this first half. I mean, both teams have just been in the right place at the right time most all the time defensively. Yeah, they both have caused uh, a uh, turnover. Both teams have had a turnover. Of course, Naaman throws the interception for a touchdown, and that's really the difference in this game. Well, and, you know, it was a pass, uh, I guess you'd say a pass rush that was coming in there, and I'm not going to say it flustered the quarterback, but it forced him to make a quick decision. And he threw it out there into the flat and just overthrew it, and, of course, the 
You know, he sees the defender guy. For, the defender for McKinney, all of a sudden he had nothing but green and glory in front of him. And That's he takes right. it all the way. Yeah, I mean, he has he sees his receiver out there in the flats, but he's just it's so in a hurry to get rid of it. He's getting that quick rush right up the middle. That's what caused the turnover. All right, McKinney going to kick it away here. Bennett back deep to receive, and he's waving it off, and oh, it's going to take a good bounce for these folks from McKinney. Go out of bounds about the 11-yard line. So I'll tell you what, that's going to be with 48 seconds. They've got 89 yards to go, and as Jerry Reed used to sing in those old Smokey and the Bandit movies, they got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I don't know if they're going to be able to pull this one off. Yeah, and it's almost where they haven't had any success running the ball and throwing the ball. So you might want to just go ahead and take this one, you know, take the knee and, and go into the halftime and, and readjust your offense a little bit, talk it over and come out. Because you're too close inside your own 10-yard line, 11-yard line. It's, it's too much right here. All right, Will. I'm going to give the ball straight ahead to Bennett. Ball carrier crosses the 15 and down on the 16 About the 16. And we got 40 seconds remaining, so it doesn't look like they're going to try to do anything, I guess you would say. Yeah, keep it safe right here. You don't yeah, want to do don't anything. Turn over right here. That's right. You don't want to go into the halftime with a bad turnover right here. You're only down 7-0. Right You're That's down right. one score. That's right. Okay, they do have back in the game Austin Valdez. He's in the shotgun with Bennett right next to him. He is back to pass. Now he's going to hum a shot downtown, and that one's going to be intercepted. Oh, my. Well, you could say that's a good-looking punt right there. He's coming away with the ball. Yeah, but that was that second was... down, and now you're giving them the ball on the 50-yard line. They have a chance to heave one into the end zone. So I'm they not sure go... why you'd do something like this here. Well, yeah, that, that was George Darius Mays coming away with the interception there. They've got four seconds on the clock. So... Yeah, now they have the no. chance right now to heave one and, and score right here at the end of the half. I, I mean, whew. Boy, and the folks from Naaman Forest have half the student body back to about the 30-yard line. <laughs> they're playing some prevent. Now it looks like they're just going to take a knee anyway. They're just going to take a knee and get out of here, or so it would seem. In the victory formation, that's what they do, and the clock is winding down. All right, we've had an incredible defensive game this first half, but this first half ends with the Lions leading at 7 0. You are listening to GRS TV. Everybody choose GISD, a diverse community, providing exceptional education to every kid we see. That's the mission. Reaching the future by driving excellence. Yeah, that's the vision. We have values. We believe every student can learn and every student deserves our best. You ready for your turn? Come join us and be a part you could be. Garland ISD proud too. Well, welcome back to Homer Jones Stadium, everyone, and welcome back to our Homer Johnson Stadium, everyone. I'll tell you what, I've started both halves with a major faux pas here, and we're going to try to eliminate those. But we're at Homer Johnson Stadium, everyone. I'm Kevin Long. Bobby's in there riding shotgun with me, and I'll tell you what, uh, you know, we're going to see some highlights coming up here, but there's only one real highlight that makes any difference, and that, of course, was that interception, which... Bobby, we'll see it right here, is going to make a huge difference, and that's the only difference in this game right now. Yeah, you see both teams coming on the field. It's a beautiful night. 45 degrees at uh, game time kickoff. Flag set in steel. There's just no wind. There it is right there. You can see the ball is just overthrown. And uh, right there, Datron Burks has nothing but green and glory in front of him. As he's able to take it in, that makes it 7-0. That's where we stand now. The Forest, I guess you could say, came up with some huge defense today. Yeah, Devin Dill and Negron and Ivory, those guys are just dominating out there. 
Look at that one-handed grab right on the sideline for the INT for Tristan Johnson. Boy, and I'll tell you what, they were waiting on that handoff there. Now, defensively, you'd have to say the Forest is really getting the job done. It's just one play that's making the difference. That's big difference right there. You see them all. You see a number 11, 34, 13. They're all in the in every play. They're right coming through there. Boy, just a huge hit right there by Negron dominating that defensive line. And they're right in the game. That's a good sign for those by the Naaman way, forced uh, uh, kids out there on the sideline, out here enjoying this game. That's great. Naaman taking the field right now. And by the way, Bobby, do you know, can you remember, are you old enough to remember who Homer Jones was? I guess not. Who okay. is that? Split end for the New York Giants oh. when I was a kid growing up. He was Fran Tarkington's go-to guy. Ah. But anyhow, we're not at Homer Jones Stadium. We're at Homer Johnson Stadium. And uh, I'll tell you what, we uh, really... Had a good, tight first half. And, you know, in terms of it being a tight game, I don't think anybody here has complained about that. You know, it has really, really been a good, solid contest, but defense has just dominated everything. Yeah, and, and it's really name and force defense has really done an awesome job. They've been able to get in, get some good sacks. They're playing the swing pass really good. Their coverage has been good. They've been able to pick the ball off, knock bat some balls down. Here's the thing. I, I, I'm really wondering how deep – Naaman Forrest is because you get out there and you look and you see a lot of the offensive players are the same guys that's out there on defense yeah, playing. Yeah, I've, I've seen that too. And you, you start thinking, well, now you get into third and fourth quarter, will these guys start wearing down and getting tired? That's that's what we're going to have to look for in this second half. All right, the folks from Naaman are going to be kicking it off now. Isaiah Rojas is back deep to receive and he no doubt is the guy they want the ball in his hands. That's their playmaker. That's kind of their home run hitter. And they're going to see if they can get the ball in his hands, although this is a little bit odd an arrangement that they've got out there, but maybe they'll spread out in a second here. As we get ready to start this second half, it is 7-0. McKinney leading the folks from Naaman Forest. Naaman Forest is only able to put up 45 total yards. They only got three first downs that first half. 24 rushing yards and 21 yards in the pass. So they're going to have to do something to get fired up on that offense. They're going to have to trick it up a little bit, figure out how to get the ball in some of their playmakers' hands. And of course, I think the McKinney defense has a little bit to do with that because those guys are, uh, they get everything covered. You know, I was talking to the South Garland coach, Coach Martinez, at halftime, and he was commenting how just capable and competent McKinney is defensively. And they're just tough to move that ball against. Yeah, they're well disciplined. I mean, they're, they're staying outside. You're not able to get outside on the guys. And and uh, off, they're also covering well. And their linebacker core mm. are very big and strong. All right, we're about to get it underway here. Now they've pooch kicked everything so far. Now they're just going to dribble. Oh, that ball's loose. Maybe get they even get a break there. And I think McKinney came up with it. No, I think they're giving it to him. No, yeah, the Forest came up with a huge break for Naaman Forest. They just stole the possession, Bobby. Boy, Colin Harris gets down there and picks it up. Now we'll see if they go with Jaden Flores or Austin Valdez. Look at that. Boy, it just bounced right off of him. And, oh, oh boy, yeah, how about beautiful. That? Beautiful. That's what Colin that's why the Harris coach... gets in there and gets that ball. Yeah, that's how you draw it up as a coach, right? Well, this is the kind of break they needed. They're down 7 nothing, And they have man-to-man -man coverage all by yourself out here <clears throat> to your big receiver, number 19, Bryson Huey, which is 6'3", 185 pounds. I mean, they could just take a chance here. All right, they're just going to hand the ball off to Bennett. <laughs> Once again, going off tackle, not a whole lot there. Well, no, they have nine guys in the box. I mean, you got five guys down linemen and four linebackers sitting right there. You're just not going to have a lot of room to run. You see how many yellow pants and white shirts and yellow helmets are right there around the, the uh, offensive line. They are just daring us to run, the name of Forrest to run. They're just daring them to, and, and that's what they've been doing. They haven't, they haven't decided to go ahead and start throwing the ball and spreading that defense out. All right, the pistol formation with Bennett right behind, right behind this quarterback. They give it to Bennett once again. They're not a whole lot there, maybe a yard. 
They're looking at third down about nine. Clock rolling with 11. Oh, eight remaining in the third period. Now the score is seven nothing. McKinney leading it and Naaman with a big break, but Naaman needs to cash in right now, Bobby. Yeah, again, they're just taking their chance right up the middle, but you know, this is where they like to do that little play action to number 11 deal and throwing the ball out of the defense, the end spot. Okay, Austin's gonna go to the far side. I got a man open over there. I think Devin came up with it, did he? Yes, sir. He did. Devin Deal, catch. who came into this game catching 30 passes for 401 yards and one touchdown, makes a huge catch right there. Look, look at it, fourth and one. I say roll the dice. Look at that. All hands goes out there and gets that ball. What a catch by Devin Deal. All right, 10-20 remaining in the third period. Name it on the move here. Big fourth down right here. Austin's just going to give the ball off, and I don't know if Bennett got it or not. No I way. don't think he did. I mean, the offensive line hadn't even moved yet. Half of them were still in their stance when the ball got hiked. So the ball goes over on downs to McKinney, but once, oh, well, you know, that, that probably should have been offsides against somebody. Yeah, I mean, it, they, it, half the offensive line, it didn't move. So I think that was either an offensive offsides or, or something. There had to be a penalty there. And it or somebody given them was drawn chance. off one or the other. And uh, But, uh, you know, we had a movement up front. All right, McKinney going back on offense. Sampson Nazarko back in there at quarterback. He's going to hand the ball off to Reed. O.J. Reed with some running room down the far side. He's going to get the first down. About 12 yards out of that one. O.J. Reed picks up first down. Takes it up. Boy, O.J. Green, when O.J. Reed, rather, when he excels, he, he, he he's pretty tough to deal with. Yeah, he was able to bounce outside. They just got a little bit tied up in there. Big tackle right there from number 34, Adrian Brown. All right, they're going to give it a read once again. Boy, he's got a hole there. He's up close to the 50-yard line, certainly right up next to that first down marker. So I don't know if he got the first down. It's either going to be second and a couple inches or he's got the first down, but Reed's been two carries and two tough two tough runs right there. So we're looking at second down and about one. Yeah, they found something right there on the inside. They were able to make a really nice block twice in a row. Going right, to the for same the third spot. time, they give it to Reed, and he delivers. He gets him that first down. Yeah, they go do the same thing right at the same place. I mean. You're starting to, starting to see some success right there running off that left tackle spot. You just go ahead and keep running it there until they can stop it. Well, that's pretty conventional coach, and you just keep going to that well. If they can't stop it, just keep going there. And they're going to continue to do that. And no Different running back in the game right now, though, as carrying the football right there was R.J. Carver. And now they got three first downs in a row. Same place, going right up that left tackle. All right, the folks from Naaman Forest, their defense is going to talk it over. And if you're if you're the Naaman defensive coordinator, what are you telling your guys, Bobby? I say just stay calm right there. Linebackers need to feel it. And the offense, that, def that defensive line needs to, instead of trying to get to that quarterback, just stay in your spot. Don't let that big offensive line move you. You just got to stay your spot, let the linebackers come in and fill the gaps and make the tackles. Well, I'll tell you what, though, they've been awful competent at opening up enough of a hole that that back can scoot right through there, and they've had three outstanding runs so far. And actually, they've only ran four plays, but all four of them, I guess you would say, would be enough to alarm any defensive staff. That's right, because when you start getting that offense to run the ball really well like that, where they're picking up seven, eight yards, picking up first downs, then – you can run off that play action and and everybody's going to the ball and all of a sudden you got somebody running behind a linebacker that should <laughs> that, that come up to make a tackle and they play action you and they get somebody open over the top of you so well, those third level tacklers are committing to the run too quick that's right they've got in the next thing you know they're throwing on you so that's right you got to make that sure that's, that's right right we might add samson's thrown for over 2,000 yards this year 16 touchdowns, so he's been pretty highly effective. But McKinney leading this one 7 0, and they're on the roll once again. First and 10 from the 34 yard line. 
Okay, there they go again. They're just going to give it a read again. He's going to get about six, seven yards, Bobby. OJ Reed, ball carrier, stopped on the 30-yard line. He saw a real dominant. Well, he got five yards. Yeah, he saw a real dominant defense <clears throat> right there by Naaman Forrest on that first half. But this second half now, they, they they went in, they relaxed. The guy's been going both ways, get a little tired. wonder if that's having any kind of effect on these players. Well, it could. As we were saying, we got folks going both ways, and that can always come back to haunt you from tank running low on gas. All right, they're going to fake it to read this time. Samson's going to keep it, and Samson ain't going anywhere. Ooh, there you go. Terrell Negrum. He got a little stiff arm, but he just fought right Don't through that and just blew Samson up. <laughs> we'll see it on the replay here. As okay. Coming up right there was Kendall Ivory, and then, well, he didn't need too much assistance, and that's going to bring him down to third and ten. So. I'd say the Forest has them right where they want them right now. We'll see if they can capitalize on this play. Sampson has Reed behind him in that pistol formation. Twins to the far side. He is back to pass. Here it comes. Oh, and he's oh, going to no. run out of there. And he's, well, I'll tell you what, was he over? I think he was over past the line of scrimmage. But doesn't matter. They didn't call it. He completes it down to about the 10-yard line right there. Boy, if he wasn't beyond that line of scrimmage, he was close. Boy, and they stick it into... Zaria Seed down there. Let's, let's see if where he was. When, all right, he's at the. Well, they, we didn't quite get a definitive look there, but he was close either way. Reed gets stopped on that one. So we're looking at. Mm, second a goal from about the eight. All right, they give it the Reed. And, Woo, there you go. Got about five out of that one. He's down to about the two. Yeah, that was a nice job of staying in your lanes. It looked like Devin Dill has still stayed out there, let the running back come to you, and he made the play. All right, they're going to get up right to the line of scrimmage. This is a big third down for both teams right here. Give it a read. Reed ain't going anywhere. Okay, he's going to lose yard to this. If you are McKinney, I say you got to kick the field goal. You're not going to run it in there from the eight on this Forest defense. Boy, I tell you, Negron has just been so good for Naaman Forrest. I mean, he has just been dominant right there at that two-tech position. Watch him blast through that running back lead blocker. How did he get through there? You know he had to get through a offensive lineman. Then he breaks through a fullback coming at you, and then he dominates the running back. Just a nice job. All Neymar. right, Seth Cox has about a 25-yarder coming up, and Seth Cox – is going to knock it through. All right, that makes it. McKinney, 10. Name it for us, nothing. You are listening to GRS TV. All right, welcome back to Homer Johnson Stadium, everyone, where the folks from McKinney have put some more distance between they and Naaman Forrest. They're now up 10-0, and Bobby, I think now is the time the Forrest offense really has no choice but to really try to make some dents in that defense if they can. Yeah, I, I think you're going to have to try to do something besides hand the ball off straight up the middle. That, that's just not worked. And, it looks like McKinney's got nine guys in the box waiting for it. Oh, oh I'll tell you what, and this one here could end up uh, getting him some good field position as Tristan Johnson takes it on the dead run. Pooch kick, he got beyond the first level of tacklers. Takes it up to about midfield, so they've got, they've got good field position. Yeah, that's the danger in doing this pooch kick. If you get past that first level, you're gone. Five yards going in the run. Damon Farmer's ball. First down. Now, they penalized him five yards. I'm not quite sure what that was about. 
I think it was offsides, uh, I believe, on the kicking team. All right, they just tack it on there, and for the Forest, this is good news. They're going to start out in McKinney territory with the ball at the 43-yard line. And number three is back in there. Austin Valdez is the quarterback. Uh-oh, this like happened again. That, that's what happened earlier. Have to, they're not catching the snaps. There's not knowing what's going on here. That false start on the offense. Five yards, first down. That happened on the fourth down and one earlier. Two plays in a row. All right, we'll bring up. Well, they got second down marked down there. That can't be correct. Make it first down. First and 15. 552 remains in this third period as Naaman Forrest trying to do something to see if they can get on track offensively. All right, Austin back to pass. Now he's going to tuck it away and go. Rolls to the far sideline, puts it up. He'll get a complete pass for a first down down there as he's able to stick it in there to Kieran Wright. And that's going to get him first down, Bobby. Yeah, now you see why they brought Valdez in there because he seems like he can stretch the stretch the offense out a little bit, maybe throw the ball with a little bit of accuracy. Seems like they he's been in there two plays and they've thrown the ball two times. So maybe they've got to figure out something to, to switch it up here on offense. They've gone his way. All right, he's back to pass. Austin rolling to the near side. Now he hums a shot in the end zone. Got a man down there. And he gets it's it. going to be a complete pass down there. As it appeared, Devin Deal hauls it in, in traffic, first and goal. Go ahead and give the, your star player a chance to get the ball. Well, that's why you bring Valdez in there. He's got an arm. Gonna try to make something happen. Go ahead and throw it up to Boy, your big receiver. Look at that. Really nice there, too, didn't he? Very nice. Okay, Austin. Empty in the backfield now. Trips to the near side. Man in motion. They're going to give it to him in the jet sweep. And Bennett has nowhere to go, though. Tried to get to that corner, but nowhere to go. Yeah, they string it out so well. They've not been able to do that the whole game. They've not been able to get outside. And they, you know, when you're trying to run sideways, it's hard to do anyway because you've got to find that lane and then cut plant your foot and cut straight up field, and it just doesn't give you a whole lot of opportunity. You like the ball to be handed off going forward or pitched going forward, something of that way. When you're going sideways, it's pretty tough. Your momentum's going in a whole different direction than That's right. you wanted to. Okay, Austin from the shotgun, second and goal. And once again, they give it to, uh, they give it to Bennett, nothing's there. So everything gets closed up quickly. All right, here comes the replay right there, and you can see. Well, the linebacker's just coming in strong. That was Adrian Shepard who came in there and applied the drill, you might say, but they're looking at third and goal now. So Austin, see if he can dial up something. They got the man in motion. He rolls to the far side. Now he puts it up in the end zone, and they had that one covered. So fourth. Fourth and goal from the eighth. He kicked the field goal, Bobby. Yeah, I think you got to try to get on the, on the board here. Defending for the Lions, they try. Well, they need two possessions and two scores, and this will get them one of them. All right, Francisco Scafetti is coming in there, and he'll attempt about a 25-yarder. up and away and boy he's got plenty of distance it looks like he knocked it through he did it is now 10-3 you are watching GRS TV
Well, welcome back to Homer Johnson Stadium, and welcome back to our broadcast in Naaman Forest. Taking on McKinney, I'm Kevin Long. Bobby George in with us. Bobby, they've cut it to 10-3. Boy, they needed to put that, those points on the board. Now they're back in. They're one possession game. Anything goes now. Big, big, big time play, big drive right there. And to be able to depend on a good kicker to kick it through, that's – Super important in high school football. Well, we'll see if they come up with any kind of pooch kick or any kind of chicanery. Boy, they're just going to bounce it right up the middle there, and that's going to give the folks from McKinney not bad field position at all as it is recovered down there by Lance Coddington right about the 32. So pretty good field position for the folks from McKinney. Naaman Forest had a dominant defense that first half. Let's see if they can get back to that dominance here. Well, they're in the pistol formation with Reed right behind Sampson. And boy, they sure relied on Reed a bunch the last series, and they're going to try to go to that well again. But Ooh. that's not going anywhere. Yeah, I don't think I'm trying to run at Carter Baroud. Okay, he has been so carrier. dominant over there on that defensive end. Yeah, Boy, and he was sure to look at him. Just fight that block off right there and hog tie that Second ball carrier. Down. That yeah. was impressive. He got his arms around him, didn't he? He said, uh-uh, not on this side. Not here, not now, not never. All right, they're going to go ahead and fake the inside handoff, throw it over the middle. You know, he did a pretty good job of threading the needle, but there were three Rangers right there. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that it got to the receiver itself. I thought it was going to have that chance of getting picked off. I thought it had a real good chance. Uh -huh. All right, we're looking at third down to about 10. So this would appear to be a passing down for Sampson, but we'll see. They've been going to read awful lot. Sampson back to pass now. He's going to tuck it away and go. Nope, he's coming on the near sideline. The pass is complete. And, boy, that was like Randy Moss's son last week in the LSU-Alabama game. Isaiah Rojas, tight rope in that sideline and able to hang on the ball without going out of bounds. They got him a first down. He keeps his eyes downfield to make that throw, which is what's real impressive. All right, they're throwing to the far side. The slip screen to the far side over there. They complete that to Zariah Seed, and he's going to get up. Well, he's going to get the first down. They got another first down. Zariah Defensively, they were in the right spot. But Reed just makes a great job of, of trying to avoid that tackle. And then when he gets wrapped up, he carries his guy to the first down. All right, they got two runners in the backfield with Sampson. Now we'll see if they give it to one or the other. There's Reed. Had him a hole there, and he gets the first down easily. You know, I said they had a first down. It was more like a second down to foot, but they got it. Picks up first down from McKinney. And make the tackle for the Rangers, Jerem, Negron, and Kendall Aubrey. All right, 220 remains in this third period. 10-3 is our score. McKinney leading it, and McKinney on the move once again. Twins left, twins right for Sampson. He is back to pass. Plenty of time. Man open on the near, I guess, hash mark. Guess who? There's Isaiah Ruas again. And that's going to be another first down. Or is this one coming back? Holding. On the uh, offense. They got him for a holding right here. Ten yards from the previous spot. Yep. First down. All right, that's huge. Instead of first and ten from about the 18-yard line, we're now looking at, uh, I guess this will be first and ten from about midfield. Actually, it'll be in... McKinney territory. So that's a huge break for the folks from the forest. All right, Sampson from the shotgun. Single setback in the backfield with him. Twins to the far side. They're just going to give it to a new runner in the game. And in the game for them, that's Lamara Ransom. And he actually has carried the ball 144 times for 911 yards this year. Six touchdowns, so they've utilized him quite a bit this year. Just not tonight, but they have twins to the near side. Samson back to pass. No. Tell you what, the rush was coming. He had to get rid of it. Yeah, where's the flag here for... 
You know, they they go, he throws that away to avoid the sack. And looks like we see, a, is there a flag on the field somewhere? We've got it They're on the screen. This now. I don't see. But they clearly are going to talk a little bit about that one because. Yeah, he was avoiding the sack all the way and throws it out there to the side. It didn't get to the line of scrimmage. It's just on the ground. There it is. Against the offense. Yeah, there we go. Ball was placed at the spot of the foul. Lost the down. See that already right, looks over there. And so the rush coming in right there. He has to get rid of it. <laughs> well, I guess maybe he could make a case that he had a receiver over there. Yeah, it's got to get back to the line of scrimmage, and it, it definitely didn't. All right, we're looking at third down and a Mars Rover trip. Third down, about 25 to go. And Zarco has got plenty of company there. He's going to have to run for his life, throw it to the near sideline, and throw it away. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Well, this time, Damon Forrest had a little spy, number 43. And uh, he, they have him, his Nick, Nick Abengawi. You see, he, as he releases right here, then all of a sudden you got this guy coming back and he's forcing him to throw it quicker. Last time he had a chance to either run, set, and throw. This time they had a spy on him, and when he broke contain, they went after him and made him throw it quick. They are looking at fourth down, and they're going to have to punt it away and back deep to receive as Kingsley Bennett for Naaman Forrest. Got a minute seven remaining in this third period. Naaman is down 10-3, but they're going to get another shot right here. Block. Oh, block. Get it. Kick. That's exactly what they needed there. And Got that it. one's going to be get going there. in there for a touchdown. Talk about a defensive game. Nick, There's the touchdown. Nick Abengawi has just pretty much put the forest right back to a level playing field. Yeah, we had just talked about him putting the pressure on the quarterback, Sampson, to make him throw early on that third down. That was actually Malachi Burrell who blocked it. And then Nick came away with it. And we are one PAT away from having a tied ball game. Boy, he's celebrating. He's having a good time. That's what playoff football is all about. All right, the kick is up and away. The kick is good. It is 10-10. You are watching GRS TV. Everybody choose GISD, a diverse community, providing exceptional education to every kid we see. That's the mission. Reaching the future by driving excellence. Yeah, that's the vision. We have values. We believe every student can learn and every student deserves our best. You ready for your turn? Come join us and be a part you could be. Garland ISD proud too. Well, Malachi Burrell blocked it. Nick took it in. Bobby, we're looking at a 10-10 game. Well, I talk about a defensive game. Both touchdowns have come defensively. And, boy, it, it's 10 unanswered points right there by Naaman Forrest. And pretty quick <laughs> answered to points, too. Well, they got to keep the momentum <clears throat> up now. They scored with 3.30 a field goal and 58 seconds, so... In about a two-minute span, they've been able to try that. Boy, that's been, you know, that's been very effective for them, kicking those ground balls. And the folks from McKinney recover, very good field position, pretty good field position. Boy, the way the Forest is playing defense, though, it don't, almost doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, you kick it deep and it gets into the end zone. It, you get it on the 25 anyway. So, really, you're taking a chance of being able to get the ball and only giving up six yards. I think that's a pretty good gamble. Well, I'll tell you what, obviously, Coach Perral is certainly is thinking along those lines. Well, they got the ball once with it. But here comes Sampson. They're going to give it a read up the middle and – you know, I think I lied to you. I think I actually. They read up the middle. They've been 
Uh, that is that is Reed. But they've been actually, to show a little bit of their depth, they've been using three runners at that featured runner position. Yeah, and you almost think Damon Forrest might need to do a little bit of that as well. They, they need to get a little bit heavy on that running attack so that they can punish that defense when they hit them. All right, they're going to fake it to Reed, throw it to the near side. Coming up with it is Rojas. Well, he tries to spin. He doesn't get too many yards after the catch, but he does get enough that they're looking at third and a manageable four. Oh, somebody hurt a little bit. Well, Kendall Ivory, man, he can really flat fly out there. He's playing that strong safety position. You see him come through there so quick and make that tackle. And that's a, that's a hard tackle to make right there. You got, you're going one way full speed, and the other guy takes off going the other direction. And it's hard to stay in front of him. He does a great job. Well, any tackle in open field is not easy. It's not easy. And, boy, he sure did a good job right there of containment. And Rojas, they're attending to him right now. Now he's up and walking around and looks to appear, appear like he might have sprained his ankle there. But Isaiah gets help to the sideline. In the meantime, his team... Is looking at a third down about four, and we've got a 10-10 game with five seconds remaining in the third period. We got a good game, Bobby. See, we got third short, really. So, really, what are they going to do here? Are they going to throw the ball? They've got Samson's got a great arm. He can really toss it around. Uh, but they've also had a little bit of luck running to that left side. How do you defense it? All right, five seconds remain, and boy, the clock, I think they're just going to wind down and let the quarter run out, and that's exactly what they are going to do. Okay, we finished three quarters of play. 10-10 is our score. You are watching GRS TV. back to Homer Johnson Stadium, everyone, where we've got a good one going. We enter the fourth period with a 10-10 score. Bobby, it's been a pretty good football game tonight. Yeah, Naaman's now at 93 yards, 75 yards passing. That all came basically from that previous drive where they picked up three points. And uh, that was Flores, uh, 6 of 15, 40 percent, 23 yards in an interception. You got Austin Valdez, 4 of 7 for 52 yards and an interception. Uh, but he did lead him down there to get that extra point, that, that three points. Kingsley Bennett, 14 attempts, 17 yards, about 1.2 yards per attempt. Jahari Lee, two yards, two attempts. And in receiving, you got Devin Deal, six for 49. And uh, Clint Wright, one of 16. And that's about where you've got your offense here. In the meantime, the offense from McKinney just sputtered as they tried the screen pass, did not work, fourth and four. They're going to kick it away, you know. Back deep to receive is Bennett. Uh-oh. And that's going to hit and bounce back right about the 45. So <laughs> I'll tell you what, pretty good field position for the Forest. Well, they've got the momentum. So it's, it's time for them to see what they can do. We've got 11.46 remaining in this fourth period. And boy, we got a nice tight game out there, too. This is really getting pretty intense. And uh, Naaman Forrest is going to send Austin Valdez back there to play yeah. quarterback. And I like that they switched it up a little bit. If it's not working, go ahead and switch it up. Get that defense thinking, hey, they're going to throw the ball, do something different. It makes the defense a little panic. But you can see all of the white jerseys in there. They're expecting them to run, and that's why you haven't been able to run the ball very much. you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys sitting in the box. All right, Austin rolling around now. He throws it in the near side. Whew. Got a man wide open, and they've gone to that well plenty of time. There's 
Devin with his seventh catch of the evening. Devin Deal just gets him the first down. Boy, Austin Valdez. I mean, he's going to do the pump and go. That's what was going on on the left. They covered it up. He sees it, keeps his eyes downfield, rolls the other direction, and throws a strike to Devin Deal. And look at that tippy-toe work right there on the sideline. Does a pretty good job. Split backs in the backfield as they get all off to Bennett. And once again, these folks from McKinney are waiting on that one, and it is throwing for a loss. Yeah, I mean, he's he's run the ball 15 times now for 15 yards. He took a loss there of four, so maybe it's a little bit worse than that. I mean, I think you got to change that back, that field up back there. you got to get somebody heavy. If you're going to keep handing that ball off to him, maybe you, you have a, a, a fullback in there to kind of lead block way for him a little bit, but that's just not been working for him tonight. All right, we got a single wide out to both sides, a double tight end alignment, Austin back to pass. Look in the near side, and, you know, I think they were just on the wrong page there. They weren't reading on, they weren't reading out of the same book because the split end cut one way and the quarterback anticipated him going the other, yeah. and we got an incomplete pass. Yeah, they, they, Devin Deal hooked up in the middle about a six-yard turnaround a curl towards the inside, and I I, th I think Valdez thought he was going to do a five-yard out pattern. All right, we're looking at third and about 14 now. 10.55 remains in the fourth period. Twins left, twins right, which would indicate that Austin's going to throw the football. He is back to pass. Here comes a rush. Throw it to the near side, oh. and incomplete. Fourth and fourth. Boy, a flag comes in late. I mean, it was there. He did grab a hold of him, and I couldn't believe the line judge didn't call that. And I guess he was just waiting for the for the back judge to call it, but he did. He made the right call. Well, they're going to get a first down out of it, so Naaman Forrest continues to move. Well, it looks like Devin Dill is just a little tired out there. He's not running oh, dang. super hard anymore. the defense on an eligible receiver. But, you know, he never comes out of the game. Okay, we can see it on the replay. Ten yards from the previous spot. Yeah, you can see Automatic. he grabs him right First there. Naaman Forrest with another first down. So that's going to spot the ball at about the 41-yard line. 10.50 on the clock, and Naaman moving the football. They've wiped out a 10-0 lead to make it 10-10, and now they're going to try to take the lead right here on this drive. All right, they go ahead and <laughs> give it to Kingsley again. Starts one way, cuts back the other. They're both covered. Yeah, I, I, it's just you just kind of every time you do that, it's like taking a penalty. <laughs> you, you lose yards every time you hand the ball off like that. Well, they lost yards there, so they're looking at second down and about 13. Now the clock rolling with 10, 25 remaining. Looking at second and long once again, but tell you what, that's kind of been their bread and butter when they're in second and third and long, coming up with a good pass play. And we'll see if Austin, Austin can dial one up here. He's got trips to the far side, empty backfield, man in motion, fake the jet sweep. No, I'll tell you what, that was blown dead. That's been offsides. Oh, boy. First start against the offense. Five yard, still, second down. All right, we're going to be looking at second down and about 18 now. Yeah, that's pretty tough when you're, you, you're struggling to get yardage anyway. You, you run the ball, you lose two or three, and then you get a false start and brings you back even further. Those are hard to overcome. They're going to try to overcome it with trips to the near side. Austin in the shotgun. And you got to believe they're going to be throwing the next couple of downs. We'll see, though. He is back to pass. Looking down the far side, throwing down the far side. Deal is oh. there. Now he could not come up with it. And they're going to say it was good, clean coverage down there. And so that will put him in a third and about 18. Boy, that was up for grabs there. Valdez is waiting on him. He sees he's in double coverage, and then he waits for him to get open a little bit, and he goes ahead and tosses it up to his 6'3 receiver. Boy, that could have worked, too. Yeah, it was right where you want it. Boy, there's sure nothing wrong with that call. Just a...
not able to come up with the football. Okay, they throw it to the near. Set up the screen beautifully to Bennett. Bennett's got a little bit of running room. He gets up to about the 32. Now that's still going to be about eight shy of the first down. Do you? Obviously, you're in a you're in a gray area. Go for it. Yeah, it's it's a tough one because it's such a far distance. You got about six <clears throat> yards. Fourth and fourth and six. Fourth and eight. Maybe fourth and eight. Fourth but, and eight, and but obviously you don't really want to punt it, and this may be too far that's for right. a field goal attempt. So yeah, you're in no man's land right here. And I think Coach Perales knows that, and his guys are just going to see if they can pull it off with a third, fourth and eight here, fourth and eight, and they're going to go for it. Balls at the 32. Why not? Valdez has got a great arm. Uh oh, another false start. Well, I'll start on the offense. Five yards, still. Fourth down. You're correct on that one. I don't believe it's going to change anything, though, in terms of them going for it. Boy, it's just a, it's so tough right there. How are you at this stage in the season having this many false starts? Well, in playoff time, you can't afford any kind of faux pas, but. All right, twins left, twins right for Austin. He's got the man in motion. He's back to pass. Starts to tuck it away. Now he is going to tuck it away and go and see what he can get out of it. He gets up to about the 27, but that is not going to be not going to get him a first down. So the Forest is going to have to relinquish the football. That's where that penalty kills you right there because if he gets seven, eight yards right there, he gets the first down. But, of course, when you got to go 15, it's pretty tough. All right, the folks from McKinney got 8.50 to work with. It is a 10-10 game. And the folks from Neiman Forest Going to see if they can rise to the occasion on defense once again. Samson from the shotgun reads in that pistol behind him. He's back to pass, throws to the far side, got a man open over there. That's Isaiah Wallace coming up with the ball. And that's going to get him about five, six yards. Yeah, that's really all you need to do. Just go ahead and run those five-yard stops. And if you've got a quarterback that can put the ball on the numbers, go ahead and, and play that. I mean, Valdez has the same opportunities on his side. If he can, if he can get those five-yard stops too, pick up quick yards. Looking at second and four right now. Clock rolling with 8.20 remaining. They go ahead and give it a read. And I think with forward progress, he's going to be right up there close. I don't know if he got it. We do have a lion down there, so they're going to attend to him. Oh, boy, he did get the first down. So. McKinney does get the first down. That'll be a first and 10 from the 38-yard line. McKinney picks up first down in the previous play. Boy, and you can see zone read, puts his head down. Well, when they put that car in reverse, let's just say they put it in reverse. Yeah. But Nick, by then he had penetrated enough to get the first down. Yeah, Nick Abengawi, he's had a great game, 43. You see, he just makes a solid tackle, but all the momentum was going against him and was able to let him drive into about two more yards to get that first down before all his help was, had arrived. Boy, but what a night we've had, a 10-10 game. Both these teams just like a couple of street fighters getting in the back alley here. And we'll check out the replay right here again. Oh, well, number 55 just gets rolled up on. All right, first and 10 from the 38, Sampson. He's got Reed right behind him in that pistol, and they're going to give it to him once again. He's going to get about two, three yards out of that one. So they'll be looking at second down and probably about eight yards okay, to go. Reed, the ball carrier. Taken down on the 40-yard line. That's where that defense got to stand up right here. You cannot, re you can't relinquish the uh, this ball game right here. You got to stop them so your offense can have another opportunity to get into the end zone. All right, Nazarko from the shotgun twins to the near side. He is looking near side. Now he's throwing near side. Got a man open over there. Drops the ball. Flag goes down. Let's see what this is all about. Yeah, it looks like two 
two offensive linemen went at one, one defender, one up top and one at his knees, and that's a no-no. Personal foul. It's a no-no to the tune of 15 yards, I believe. That's right. They got Stop block on the offense. They did that to Tommy Dunn. From the previous he's, still, still. he's still limping around. You see, they'll get him up top oh, and then God, go that, down on bottom. That was pretty blatant, too. Yeah, that's terrible. That's how you get people hurt right there. All right, second down and about 23 to go. Seven. 33 on that clock. Boy, we got a good game going on out here. 10-10 huh? tie, and it is intense. All right, Sampson is going to go ahead and give it a read. That's not going to get them anywhere what they need. Might get them two or three yards, but they're going to be looking. They're going to be looking at third and long here, third and about 20. Solo by Carter Baroo. Third and long for the line. All right, we're closing in on the seven-minute mark here. And the Lion coaching staff. They're all out on the field trying to call what? plays. And Had three of them out yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, Nazarko back to pass. Looking far side, throwing far side. Is it picked? Oh. Almost picked. And they're going to have to punt this away. It's fourth and 20, so... Naaman Forrest will get their hands on the ball once again. Boy, a good stop by that Naaman defense. They played awesome all night long. Look at this read. He gets out there. Boom. Takes a big shot. He had to get rid of it. Oh. Had his man out there, though. Yeah. I Tell mean, I, he had Isaiah Wallace out there. Couldn't connect with him. But any rate, going back deep to receive is Kingsley Bennett. And we'll see what kind of field position Naaman can get out of this one. He's I think back about the 30. Oh, good kick. Going to let it pop, and oh boy, it takes a good bounce there for the folks from McKinney down to about the 16. So I think you'd say pretty good special teams play by McKinney there. Yeah, they had two guys down there. To and we got a flag down. Let's see what this is about. Oh, boy. Surely not running right. to the kicker. Oh, boy. Five yards. So they'll probably decline that because the punt was so good. Gonna is decline. Yeah, they're going to decline that. First down. They're going to decline that, and that'll put Naaman Forrest back to the 16-yard line. But our scenario, and it's a pretty neat one here. Is, are we taking a timeout in the field? It will be a 634. 634 remains in this game. It is 10-10. And like I said, two alley fighters just getting in the just getting in the back alley and going at each other. And this has really been some kind of knockdown, drag out battle out here at Homer Johnson Stadium. All right, they're gonna go with Valdez once again at the quarterback. They've gone with him most all. Running right into the kick will be set at the end of the kick. Boy, that'll back him up even five yards further. So the ball's at the 11-yard line. First down. First and 10 from the 11-yard line, and Naaman's got receivers spread all over the field. They got trips to the far side, twins to the near side. And the quarterback, Austin Valdez, back there by himself. He's got 6.34 to work with. Throws down the far sideline. I'll tell you what, he lucky that one didn't get picked. Well, he has plenty of time to throw, and it's really spread out that defense, but his guys were sitting wide open. It looked like he went up to go get it and then thought somebody was behind him, and he pulled his arms back down. I'm, I'm not sure if he thought he was going to get hit or he's going to block the ball down. So watch, he goes up, and then he kind of pulls his arms down. He has the catch. Yeah. You know, uh, three Lions in that area, though, just kind of off target. All right, that's going to ring up a second down and 10. Bennett in the backfield, they're going to give it to him, and he's not going to get anything. So make it third and 10. They calling a timeout? Is somebody calling a timeout? No, I thought I thought for a second there when I heard that whistle, we might have had a timeout. But we're looking at third and 10, so they're going to have to dial up something pretty neat right here. The 
most important is that offensive line giving Valdez some time to throw this ball and find his man. He, he keeps his eye downfield. All right, he's looking downfield. Now he's uh, got all kinds of company back there, and they they sack him back about the four-yard line as Jonathan Jones, all 6'3", 240 of him, pounds of him, was in there. And I'll tell you what, that is going to put the Forest in a fourth and about 18. And these folks from McKinney with 530 remaining in this game are going to get halfway decent field position. Now the most important thing is just to get this punt off. Francisco Scafidi in punt formation. Kind of a low, good kick back to midfield. And taking it back there is Wallace. Oh. And he ain't going anywhere. Big time play by Destin Com Crabtree. 6'3, 185 pounder. Or is that Bryson Huey? We'll see on the replay there, you know. Isaiah's the guy you want the ball in his hands. He's their big playmaker. Big play right there. I think that's Bryson Huey, 6'3", 185 pound, getting downfield and chasing him down and making that tackle. Now that's a big time play right there. And when you consider Wallace is the one guy they want the ball in his hands. He's their big playmaker and they got it in hand, his hand and Bryson wasn't buying into the hype. Okay, first and 10 ball at the 48 yard line for McKinney. They got 5.06 to work with. Give it the read up the middle. Oh, he bounces it to the far side. And tell you what, he actually gets about five yards out of what perhaps maybe should have been one yard. But a good effort by Reed to break that tackle and get to the boundary. And uh, they're going to be looking at second down and probably about six. We'll see where they spot the ball. Do we have a flag on that one? Because they're not moving the chain at all. Well, they've moved the ball. I don't know the they chain's not the moving chain. yet. I'm not sure. <clears throat> All right, second down and six. We're down to 425 in this game. Samson back to pass. He's in trouble. He's got to throw it away, and he got a receiver over there. So I guess we can, I guess they can nail him for intentional grounding there, but it was really nowhere near the receiver. Again, it's that defensive line. They're just dialed in and, and doing these delayed blitzes. You see coming through there, number 12 coming through there like that, Negron. That's just a delayed blitz, just a nice time blitz that's, that's really throwing the timing of Sampson off with his receivers. He's looking at third down. He's got to come up with six yards with 418 remaining. Back to pass. Looking over the middle, throwing over the middle, had a man open over the middle. Isaiah couldn't come up with, or Zariath couldn't come up with it. Zariath Sade could not come up with a football, and so they're looking at fourth down and about six to go. Do you go for it here? Nope, they're not going to do that. They're going to punt it away. They are going to punt it away with 4-12 remaining, and I'll tell you what, we may be looking at some overtime here, Bobby. The way they've been punting the ball, you see how Naaman has got two guys just dropped straight down, straight in the middle. And I think I would I'd pull somebody way over to the sideline because that's where he's been punting it. Well, they go down that sideline and it pretty much goes out. Well, they, they actually down at about the 11-yard line. So good special teams play. And now Naaman Forrest has got to go about 88 yards. They got 403 to work with. But, boy, this has overtime written all over it right now. Well, you got four minutes. You've, you've got to just dial something up to get six, seven yards at a pop. What a game we've had out here at Homer Johnson Stadium this evening. What a game. This really just get down and get after it. Okay, Valdez is going to look to the near side. Try that slip screen to deal. Oh, he had it that time. Pass intended for Devin Deal is incomplete. That's the first catch, the first pass that I've seen him miss in a long time. He's made some remarkable catches, all hands. This time it gets to his body. And this is the only play time that he's really had a chance to catch the ball and actually move, move around and pull some yardage out of it. 
All right, 358 remains in the football game. 10-10 is our score. Valdez with a couple of runners back there. They're going to give it to the second man through. That's Bennett. And not going anywhere, so we're going to be looking at third and about 10. Boy, you know, they're indicating that they stole the ball. I, I think that was down, though. Yeah, the whistle had already blown. But anyhow, that's going to bring up third and 10. Clock rolling with 335 remaining in the game. All right, we're looking at third down and 10. So we'll see what Naaman can come up with here. Trips to the near side for Valdez. Rolling to the near side. Now he throws it downtown to the near side, but he's not going to be able to complete that one. And they're looking at fourth and 10, and they are going to have to relinquish the football with three minutes remaining, Bobby. Well, Valdez does a great job right there. He gets pressure on him almost immediately. And he has the presence right here. Watch this presence to go er, stop like that and get the ball off. But these folks from McKinney should get fairly good field position as Francisco is going to have to punt it right at his goal line. Okay, he gets off a pretty good kick. That chases him back. Hits about the 50, bounces back. So 49-yard line is where these folks from McKinney, the 49-yard line of Neyman Forest is where they'll have it. And they got 254 to work with. And, of course, I imagine they're probably thinking three first downs on a field goal. Yeah, I would think so because they we've already seen their kicker kick it very good from long distance. Well, I'll tell you, if I'm naming – I'm trying to take a shot at Bryson Huey. I mean, he's showing some speed right there. You've seen him twice run down the field and, and make that tackle and then get the ball right here on these punts. And he's a big character. He's 6'3". He, he's got good hands. Maybe you got to get him the ball. All right, Samson back pass. They're coming with a blitz. He runs out of there. He tries to run out of there, but he's not going anywhere. He just lost about six yards. Well, a nice job right there by Nick Evangowie. Are they going to call it a timeout? Yeah, they're going to. They're going to. Well, I think that's an injury timeout. Is that on the quarterback right it there? Is it Samson so. that's hurt? It appears so. And if that is the case, that is really, that is really going to put McKinney in a, I guess you'd say, bit behind the eight ball there. If they have to go with a different quarterback now, with 2:33 remaining. In the season, possibly. You never like to see that, ever. But a second team quarterback is looking at a big stage with some bright lights. And that's going to be tough to handle. But let's see before we denounce Sampson is through. If he gets up and walks this one off, he started rolling to that far side. And, you know, the uh, pressure was just too much. Oh, yeah. Evan Gowie. When he tackles him, he pulls him back and lands on his ankle. And that's, you know, it's almost like that horse collar tackle. That's why they out -ruled, they ruled that out where you grab them behind you and then you pull your body on top of the back of their legs. That's almost what happened. Now, it was a clean tackle. I'm not saying it was horse collar, but it, it's kind of the same way. He grabbed him and then he landed on the back of his legs. All right, we're looking at second down and 15 and... We'll see who they insert into the game at quarterback. It's going to have to be a new one. Seth Cox, it looks like, 6'3", 210, junior. That's who's coming out there. All right, Seth. Make your bones, Consigliari. Seth is going to, he's in a lot of pressure right now, but... Boy, and they had somebody move on the line, so I think that's going to back them up with... You know, Seth has enough to worry about without his lineman jumping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, first off, we're out there. Five yards, still, second down. Well, I'm not sure what happened, but they sure were excited about that. I mean, they were jumping up and down. and. Well, I think, you know, they're doing everything they can to rent space in Seth's mind. Yeah, you can see the running back move right there. 
He moves his foot forward. They got him. All right, Seth looking near side, throwing near side. And Seth looked pretty darn good on that one as he completes it to Zariah Sade over there. Yeah, how would that, how do you like that be your first play? You, you, you get in there, they say, okay, now you're going to have to throw it. And uh, he does a good job when he did it, though. He, he, he well, stepped he his foot close in there. to 10 yards. Yeah, very nice. I'm a little comeback. So he's looking at third and 10 now, although nothing will ever beat the one when maybe I'll tell you this story at the end, but Bo Nix, the quarterback of Auburn, his father Patrick did something I had never seen before, and I'll tell you about that right after they get done with this play here. Cox back to pass, and he's going to oh, run wow. it out of there, and even maybe Bray's going to get the first down, too. He, he's still going about the 30 inside to about the 28. So a heck of a play there by Seth Cox, but what I was going to say, Patrick Nix was a sophomore quarterback at Auburn. Did we got a flag down there? Yeah, what happens here is number 43 actually falls, uh, 93 falls down. He had him dead to right, and he just trips, and he was able to get by him. It's Izzy Reyna that was able to – he was right there to get him. He just trips and falls. All right, they're getting close to field goal range with about a minute 30 remaining. They're just going to give the ball up to Reed. He comes up there, doesn't get anything. But anyhow, Patrick Nix was looking at a fourth and about 15, and they decide to go for it. First play is in for the Auburn Alabama. Game. Come out. And he so threw it eight. all the way down to the goal line to a guy named Frank so Sanders for a touchdown. The second half. So, you know, it uh, you never know how that's going. But set the game look. clock. Give me 131 on the game clock. 131 on the game clock. So Seth doesn't look that out, class. Now, here's about where they stand. One more first down, it's field goal range. That, that's true. You were right. First down, and, and they can kick a field goal here to win it with 131 left in the game. Well, boy, what a what a football game we've had out here at Homer Johnson Stadium this evening. It really has been a lot of fun to watch because both these teams came in here fighting like you would expect playoff teams to fight. Boy, it was just one mistake right there. I mean, you had him dead to right coming up the middle on a blitz, and you just kind of get the turf monster, takes down your defensive player, and they turn it into a huge play right there to get that first down and almost get them into field goal range. Well, right now, if they tried to kick it right now, they'd be looking at about a 45-yarder. And I'll tell you what, the... <laughs> That kicker looks like he could handle that, but they want to try to get him in a little bit better position than that. All right, Seth Cox looking at a second and nine, and they're just going to give it straight ahead to Reed, and Reed is going nowhere. Yeah, big take back right there. They lose a yard. Are they going to call the timeout? They are going to call the timeout and talk about it. So 123 remains in the, in the game. Boy, this is this, is this home stretch is pretty interesting. Well, There's a the second timeout of the second half. That number 12 right there. Now, he's had a game all night long. Negram, I mean, it's not going to be because of him not playing hard. Well, I think it's not going to be because of any of them playing hard because, boy. boy, the forest has really given a lot of effort. And, you know, I obviously am not Nostradamus and cannot predict the future. But um, regardless of what happens here this evening, Jesse Perales has made his mark in the Dallas Fort Worth area his first year to take a team that was 0-5, get them into the playoffs, turn around and get them in the playoffs, and then take on a team from what's well regarded as one of the best districts in the whole state. And here they are fighting them 10-10 as we come down to the final minute, well, the final moments here. But name and Forrest have a lot to be proud of. All right, we'll get the pieces on the table set for you right here. Seth's going to go from the shotgun. He's got twins left. A single setback, a single wide out to the near side. Seth is back to pass. He's going to hum a shot in the end zone, see what he's got there. And uh, I don't believe it. Oh, no. I'll tell you what, that's incomplete. The way the cheerleaders reacted over there, I thought he had the football. <laughs> yeah. Well, that ball hung up in the air just a little too long, and it gives number 23 right there, Br Brunel, 
Burrell too much time to get under it, set his feet, and, and do a jump ball knockdown right there. I'll tell you what, the, uh, the, way, the way the cheerleaders reacted, I thought he had caught the ball, but he didn't. And so they're looking at a fourth and ten. And they're going to go yeah. for it. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, that, I, I guess don't know they, any other I don't know what else you'd do right now. We've got a 115 remaining in this game. They're looking at a fourth and ten. Seth Cox back to pass. Putting the pressure on him. Rolling far side. Throwing down. Oh, he's got a man open down there. I think he's out of bounds. Is he out of bounds or is he going to? Nope, he's not out of bounds. And they are going to have it first and ten from the 11-yard line. Seth Cox with nerves of steel. Boy, there he Boy, is. He just he... breaks out and just gets wide open. He was out. No, maybe he was in by an inch. Boy, I... It was close, Was though. his toes out of bounds? It looked pretty close from here. Yeah. But, goodness. Look, I look. mean, he runs down and, and breaks out about 15 yards down the field. Oh, there everybody's looking at the at the uh, TV, the big screen. You know, and this is funny, too. They're, it's not, not like the referees are going to change it, but they are looking at the big screen and seeing everybody's reacting to it. All right, they're going to give it a read straight ahead. He's going to keep it within those hash marks. But one minute remains. But, yeah, you, uh, Bobby, you're exactly right. What happened was when they showed it on the big screen here, it sure did look like he was out. Let's see if we can see it right here. Okay, we'll see how de definitive we can get right here. Yeah, come out. So it's the name of Farrell. Oh, I'll tell you what. If he There's was a second in, time out he was in about the second a half, half inch. And he may have been. Oh, yeah, you can't see it right there, but... What a great job of catching that slow-mo right there by our camera crew. I was going to say, our camera crew may have caused a little bit of commotion <laughs> among the fans <laughs> here because when they saw that. Right there. I mean, boy, that is uh, that's pretty that's close. close. But at Good any catch. rate, you saw the whole name in for a sideline. Uh, kind of went ballistic when they said, like, he's got to be out. Mr. Game Clock, 55 seconds, please. But right now, you'd have to say the chips are all on. McKinney's end of the table right now because they're looking at the ball at the about the 10 yard line so this is a chip shot for their kicker you know it's not going to be much more than a PAT so they would appear to be in pretty good shape but even so they uh, still got a couple of plays they can run and I imagine well we'll find out like I say I can't predict the future they're just going to keep it right in the middle of the field and set that kicker up Okay, Seth has Reed behind him. 56 seconds remains. Okay, they give it a read. Boy, you know, surprisingly, he tried to bounce it to the outside, and I don't, don't know that that's what you want to do because you want to keep that ball in the middle of the field for your kicker. Boy, Baroud, he's been so good all night long and just continues his dominance out there. All right, clock running, 35 seconds remains. 23 on the play clock. So uh, differentiation there of about 12 seconds, and they're just going to let it wind down as much as they can. They'll probably take a timeout right before, no? No, nah, they got to come to the near side. Set up their kicker with 15 seconds. And, okay, they're going to get it about the six-yard line, 11 seconds. I predict they call a timeout with two seconds on that clock. We'll see. Well, they called it with three. Okay, so it all rests on the shoulders of their kicker, and we'll see if Time out. And of McKinney. Course, the kicker, the There's kicker third, is Cox. And final timeout. So Seth Cox for the second half. is going to be a hero in homeroom on Monday if he can convert this kick right here. Yeah, he just comes into the game and and converts that big fourth and fifteen at midfield to get them down there. And then, of course, Damon Forrest holds them still to fourth down and and long. And, and then he converts that one on that long pass down the sideline. I mean, how would you like to be coming in off the bench and in a time like this in a big playoff game and deliver like he's delivered? Boy, he's handled it, has he not? Yeah, and now he's got the opportunity to win it. Field goal. 
But it's been a valiant effort. No matter what happens, this name of Forest defense has been outstanding tonight. And they've got a lot of great players, and a lot of them are going to be coming back next year. They're going to try to call that timeout Come out. and freeze the kicker. So it's the name of Favre. That is that third and final timeout of the second half. All right, this is about a 24-yard attempt right here. And, of course, until it's through, I'm not counting the forest out because they pulled a lot of things out tonight. But I have to say this, McKinney could not have handled that final drive much better than what they did. Well, they had two big plays. It was fourth and long. He, he scrambles to get some yards, set them up, and then it was fourth and long again, and they delivered a big pass down the sideline. But again, there's only six, seven uh, uh, seniors on the whole team of name and force. So they're going to have their whole crew basically back next year. All right, Seth, with the opportunity to win it right here, Seth Cox with a 24-yard field goal attempt right here. And we'll see if they can break that 10-10 tie. Okay, it's up and away, and I think he got it. And the reaction you see would indicate he does have it. And on the last play of the game, McKinney is able to defeat Naaman Forrest 13-10. And Bobby, I think you already said it pretty succinctly. The Forrest doesn't have much to be ashamed of. Now they go, they go from 0-5 at the beginning of the year, run the table basically get into the playoffs and play their hearts out. And boy, what a way to win and what a horrible way to lose. Well, and the, another thing too, they have to take on a team from one of the better districts in the state and take them down to the final play. 13-10 is our score. Any final thoughts, Bobby? I just think these guys is the last game for a lot of players. And, uh, and then, but you got a, a great team coming back next year. Most of the whole team is juniors and senior, juniors and sophomores this year. They'll have a great team, great chance next year. Okay, on behalf of Bobby George, I'm Kevin Long, and we're going to say so long from Homer Johnson Stadium. Once again, McKinney wins it this evening. 13-10, you are watching GRS-TV.